R.I.P. George Bush. Rest in peace, Mr. President. Also, today is December 7th. Let us remember all the brave souls who lost their lives at Pearl Harbor on that fateful day. Rest in peace to all the military veterans. Now that I got that out of the way, you see where your boy's at? Back in Birmingham, three weeks with the trainer. It's done, people, it's done. Your boy's back, upgrade on Monday, hopefully. Well, 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 what do we have here? Y'all can't see me right now. Y'all can't see me. I'm gonna show you where what I'm at. What do we have here, fellas? What do we have here? Your boy is motherfucking back. What's up, YouTube? Back in Birmingham. Back, people. Three weeks with a trainer. Been a hell of an adventure, man. Hell of an adventure. Did my orientation right here in Birmingham. If y'all ain't seen my other video, did my orientation in Birmingham. Didn't get a trainer in Birmingham, so they sent me to Tulsa to get a trainer. Tulsa sends me to Laredo. Meet up with the trainer in Laredo. I meet up with him on a, a Tuesday. Yeah, I met up with him on a Tuesday. First load assignment we get, Deadhead to Dallas. From Laredo to Dallas, Deadhead. Not sure how many miles it is, I forgot. But we did headed to Dallas, spent the night. The next morning, got a load. Ooh. Took that load to California. Got another load out of California. Took that to Kansas. Left Kansas. Got with another trainer. A million mile trainer. Got over him in Oklahoma in Tulsa. Million mile guy. This guy had a manual transmission too. A lot of y'all don't even got licenses to drive manual. Some of you do, some of you don't. But uh, he had a manual transmission. So, um, yeah, I hadn't drove a manual transmission since I was in truck driving school. But since everyone got the debate, manual, automatic, automatic is better. No argument. No argument, man. We, we, manual transmissions are outdated, man. Like I told him, million mile guy. When I, we was having this discussion in the truck, I said, look, man, you trying to tell me you don't use ratchet wrenches. You use regular slip nose pliers. I said, you don't use ratchet wrenches. That's the same thing. I said, man, it's the same thing. The plier do said make the job easy. He said, no, I don't use ratchet wrenches. Come on, man. I bet he got a set of ratchet wrenches at his house. So anyway, Met up with this guy. I did a week with him. Today's Friday. I just got on his truck last Friday. So overall, my training didn't go exactly three weeks. It may maybe like two weeks and a half. But uh, I didn't even know I was getting off the truck today. I, I thought I was getting off next week because we already had a load going to Minnesota. And um, we got there yesterday. It's supposed to picked up yesterday. When we got there, as soon as we pulled up, that was like, load ain't going to be ready till in the morning at 8 o'clock. <clears throat> load wasn't ready at 8 o'clock. They probably didn't start loading it till about 9 o'clock. Um, and then they start, when they started loading it, they got they got the whole truck down there loaded. But it was missing like one more piece that they had to put on it. So we ended up waiting like, man, we probably waited like, an hour just to get that last little piece to put up there and I'm thinking like yeah man if we was like right outside of uh, we was on the other side of Daytona Beach we was in Deland Florida 
right on the other side of Daytona Beach. And we're supposed to go to Minnesota by Monday at 7.30 in the morning. But we would've got loaded yesterday. Then, it, cause it was like, maybe like 1600 miles. If we would've left yesterday, you know, we could've took our time getting there. We wouldn't have to rush. So when we got there, bam, um, wait till tomorrow. So then today, you know, we got loaded. I was out there. I was out there actually talking to Lowe because you know I'm training the guy. He lets me. Um, I mean, he'll show me some some certain things to do on the tarp job, and then he'll walk off. Like he might walk off and then come back later and check on what I'm doing and all that. So uh, I mean, that's pretty much what you're doing. I mean, I don't know. Maybe your trainer might work. Which he worked with me the first time, but uh, they really let you do it by yourself, so you can learn when you get your own truck. I mean, it's actually best to do it by yourself. And if you have any questions, you know, ask the trainer. The trainer will tell you uh, what you did wrong or whatever. he tell you, maybe you didn't even do nothing wrong. But he might just tell you a better way to do things, you know. But, yeah, it's a pretty good trainer. Only, only thing, you know, like I said, I ain't drove a manual since I was in truck driving school. So uh, I had some problems with the manual. I didn't, it really was like sometimes I might couldn't get it. I mean, upshifting ain't too bad. The downshift, and I think that's what hurts a lot of people is the downshift, you know. Yeah, so I mean, some, sometimes I nail it. Like I might drive five, six hours. Don't miss no gears, you know, getting in. But yeah, you might get the one red light. I stalled out. I think I stalled out twice. I stalled out the first day, which was last Friday. I stalled out one time. Then uh, today, tonight, on my way back to Birmingham, I stalled out one time. I think I stalled out twice. I was like, damn, I ain't stalled out one time in that first day. Then today, I stalled out twice. But, you know, I feel like, you know, I was rushing to get back to Birmingham. I already got the damn truck. So, I mean, I, and I set the camera off. Set the camera off twice. Ain't did that all week. Ain't set the camera off. Because, you know, the trucks do have drive cams in them. But, hell. I won't do nothing wrong, you know. I just, uh, I get, I get, I mean, another thing about driving the manual transmission, you know, uh, you got like, um, you know, you got to let out the clutch a little bit, especially if you're on a hill. You got to let out the clutch a little bit. And you got to hold that brake down till the truck start moving, because if you don't, you know, you let out the clutch, and you let your foot off the brake, the truck gonna roll backwards. So, you know, you got to hold your foot on that brake, man, and make sure, um, Make sure that truck don't uh, roll backwards. But guess what? You got three pedals. Clutch, brake pedal, gas pedal. When you let out that clutch, I mean, if you got a load on the back, you know, you got to give it a little gas. That clutch ain't going to move it, but it ain't like in the car. You got the clutch, it roll a little bit. Now, you got to give that truck a little gas. So, um, I think one time I was on the hill, a lot of traffic, you know, so I was trying to hurry up and get out the down hurry up and get on it so it went and roll backwards. And I was making a uh, left turn, getting on the, on the freeway, so ended up stalling out. That was the second time I stalled out, cause that's, that's, that second time, I got it back on pretty quick. Hit the key, cut it back on, got it back in gear, rolling. But um, the first time, the first time was my fault. Um, me, me trying to, Start out in third gear instead of starting out in second. Because um, when I was in truck driving school, we was actually starting out in fourth gear. But the thing about that, we didn't have no load on the back. And we didn't even have a heavy load today. It might have been like 25,000 pounds, you know. So, um, yeah, man. Start out. You know, you don't got to start out in first, but start out in second. But uh, you're going you gonna to be, you're going you gonna to get out of them low gears probably before you even get like 15, 20 miles an hour. I mean, the truck the truck don't really start pulling until you go from five to six. Like when you go from five to six, that's when you're going like 15 miles an hour. And uh, five, like one, like not even one, but two, three, four, and five, you know, you just getting it rolling. But once you, once you go from five to six, once you flip, flip that damn lever up, psh, you, you heard a little air pop on that motherfucker say, psh, pop that motherfucker up, psh, throw that bitch in six, gas rolling. 
And uh, yeah, he, he taught me how to float the gears uh, a little bit too. But uh, I'm not no professional at floating gears. I'm a double clutcher. In my opinion, and maybe these super truckers will disagree, but you know, the people that can float gears with no problems, they, they, they be the people that drive that same truck every day. Like every day, you know, they're driving that truck. They know exactly where to take it out, where to put it in at. So, you know, that was his truck. He knows, he knows exactly where to put it in and take it out. Cause you know, when I was in school, you know, they, 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 te they teach you off the RPMs. Like, you know, the RPMs, you know, you can drive any truck, no matter if you drove it or not. So that double clutch technique always gonna work. That float technique, I mean, unless you got time to really figure it out, you ain't gonna be floating them damn gears. Cause hell, when I was asking him, I was like, well, I was like, well, what, what RPM do you take it out at, the downshift? Hell, he couldn't even tell me. You know why? Cause he don't pay attention to that shit cause it's his truck, you know? He just listens to the engine. But see, like me, I, I know when to listen to the, I mean, you can you can hear the engine when it's ready to turn over. But like I said, if you know how to read a, read a fucking tachometer, you can get in any damn manual transmission truck and drive that motherfucker, as long as you know how to read that tech. But um, it was a good experience for me to get out and learn that manual transmission. It was a good experience. And like I told him, cause uh, Melton, almost all Melton trucks are automatic anyway. And not even just Melton, that's, Mostly every company in America. I mean, they doing that because, you know, they dumb it down. Anybody can drive a truck, man. You, you get an automatic, anybody can drive. You don't got to be a damn super trucker. You don't got to be goddamn, oh, yada, yada. Uh, like, like, like somebody told me, oh, you got to really have a love for this. Don't just look at it as a job. Man, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, I am looking at it as a job. A job that I'm uh, that I'm that's a good career path for me because uh, from the pay from the pay standpoint, you know, it's a good job, man. If you got a good job and you have fun doing it, of course you love it. Yeah, but you know you got the old school truckers that's constantly looking down on these new truckers, constantly looking down, trying to criticize us and all this and that. Talking, oh, in the old days. It won't like this in the old days we did this. Guess what? These same old truckers, they got all these old ass stories. Where they at? At the same company you at? Where they at? Where, where all this old money at that they, they had? You know, they they want to criticize all the new truckers. Where, where, where is that? They, they go to another company. You go out there and take the road test. Who giving you a road test? Uh, a, a, a probably a new truck driver that probably ain't that you been driving way longer than him. So I mean, yeah, they follow the same set of rules we got. They got the same amount of hours of drive we got. I mean, hell, that, that's the reason we got these fucking this fucking uh, DOT shit with the hours of service. Cause these motherfuckers got there running all these stupid ass paper logs and shit, falling asleep driving, running off mountains and shit, and hitting school buses and all that. So yeah, man, all you old school drivers, man, get the fuck out of here with that shit, man. Nobody cares about that. If, if you were so good in the old days, why why are you still in a goddamn new company with the new drivers? Why you ain't got your own company? So yeah, man, don't don't listen to these old drivers, man. Let tell them motherfuckers leave them old stories in the past. Riding with these trainers, riding with these trainers, man. Hey, it's all in what you make it. What you got to realize is you riding with these trainers because that's the company policy. They got to show you how the things operate. I mean, so, you know, it's just a process you got to go through. I mean, you got to just make the best of it. You get up there with your trainer. You know, you know, you know, you might start out cool first couple days, you know. I mean, but eventually, you know, y'all living in a tight space, you know, like, uh, you might want to listen to some music, or you might want to talk on the phone, or he might want to talk on the phone, so, you know, but you don't want nobody to hear your conversations, because you're in this tight-ass space, then one person got to get out, one, yeah, man, man, these trainers, man, if you got to go out with a trainer, you know, you just got to make the most of it, man. 
Hopefully y'all will be parked in some good spots where you can know when you know where you can get out the truck and go like get you something to eat or sit down somewhere. You know, I I sat at McDonald's last night. They got they had a patio at McDonald's. I sat out there. I, I went in McDonald's. I ordered two coffees because I knew I was gonna be sitting out there. I ordered two coffees, and I took both of them out there on that patio. And I sat on that patio at McDonald's for like two hours, just just relaxing. I mean, cause you know when you with a trainer, man, you know you ain't got nowhere to sit. Unless you, uh, hey, I sat on the back of the trailer one time and leaned my back on the boat head and just kicked it up there for a little while. I mean, cause you don't want to be in that tight spot, you know. I mean, you and your trainer, you might not got the same taste. Like he might he might want to goddamn go to bed at seven o'clock. But hell, you don't. So you don't want to disturb him, cause he in the bed. So you know, out of respect, you get out the truck. You you, you go somewhere else to talk on the phone or listen to your music, cause you know, out of respect, you know, you don't you don't want to disturb this guy. But uh, back to that back to that thing. When you get on these trucks, man, just. Treat, treat the trainer with respect. That's what I did. I always treat it with respect. This last train I got, uh, yes, sir, no, sir. You know, excuse me, sir. Like, like you know, I, I, I got no problem keeping shit professional. I'm, I'm a professional ass dude. You know, I might not be professional on this video because, you know, I might say a little cuss words and stuff. But in reality, I am, I know how to act professional. In a professional setting, you're going to get professional D. Right now, I'm just chilling in this hotel room, giving y'all a little bit of commentary on this, on this shit that I just went through. Treat the trainers with respect, you know, and, and you treat them with respect. And the reason you do that is because the same respect you dish out, same respect you want to get back. So yeah, don't 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 uh be respectful. But just because you riding with a trainer, don't mean you let this trainer run all over you. Don't that it don't mean that. Cause you know, they work for the same company you work for. And he, he I don't know, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna say yeah. He he followed the same set of rules you follow. Hey, so I mean if you feel like, you know, you know, uh, one of my trainers he, he was trying to, I mean, they, they try to tell you stuff, man. Like, like if you're a new driver, you know, these new drivers, you just came out of CDL school, you just got your permit. So, you know, you know, you know, you know a lot of stuff by the book. You know, like you go to take your permit test and say at nighttime, you need, to, you need to slow down a little bit, go slower than you did in the daytime. Whew, excuse me. Because you're stopping distance. I mean, I ain't say stopping distance, but, um, your, your your perception distance, your reaction distance. You know, you can't see because it's dark. So you gotta compensate by, for that by, by adjusting your speed to match what you can see in front of you. You know, you wanna be able to see eight seconds ahead. I mean, but at nighttime, you know, you might can't see as far as it is at daytime. So what you gotta do, you gotta compensate, you gotta slow down. Yeah, but these trainers, they feel like they're above the law. <laughs> they feel like they feel like the speed limit 65 and then and they want to run 67 yeah, I mean Melton trucks is governed at 65 but uh this this certain truck because it was a manual it ran about 68 you know even if you even if you you are in the governed truck at 65 and the speed limit is 65 I mean that those speed limit signs they are there for cars they're not they're not over there for trucks. You gotta think about that, especially like when you going on these uh, off ramps on the uh, interstate. Like they might, it might be posted at 35, but you know a truck. You know, I mean, you never know what you might got up there. You might got a light load like we had today. You know, if it say 35, like you might need to go down to 25. You driving, and, and uh, you driving on these roads. You know, speed limit might be 65. But but say you say you not on the interstate, say you on a state route, uh, one of the, one of these little back roads. You got a lot of curves, you got a lot of hills. You might not feel comfortable. Like I didn't feel comfortable riding them roads 
with the cruise control. Like you ride the cruise control on the interstate, but no back roads like that. Nah, I want I want comfortable with the cruise control alone. Cause uh, you don't need to keep the same speed for every stretch of the road. I mean, you come. I mean, you you going down hills. I mean, if you didn't have cruise control on, when you going down a hill, you know, you could just let out the brake and let the truck slow down. <sighs> excuse me. Yeah, excuse my yawning. But anyway, you know, you coming down the hill, you know, you let the truck slow down. But uh, with the cruise control, you know, that motherfucker, sh- that motherfucker shooting. That motherfucker shooting now, man. <laughs> Hey man, you go you going around curves. If you, if you wasn't using cruise control, what you would normally do, you know, you might tap the brake a little bit, just slow you down. And then uh, like like when you go to take your permit test, you supposed to downshift before you enter the curve. That's what they tell you in driving school. Downshift before you enter the curve. I mean, if you want an automatic, you ain't gonna downshift. It's gonna it's gonna downshift for you. So you just gotta hit the brake before you go in, like. You want to avoid hitting the brake too hard while you already in it. You want to slow down before you get to it. So, but with that cruise control, if you set it, if you set the cruise control to 65, and I mean, speed limit is 65, you're doing the speed limit, but you get to this damn curve, and this motherfucker like, shh. Hey, I, 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 trust me, I done hit curves on cruise control. I done hit them. And that's why I said, nah, I'm not going to use cruise control at night. Unless I'm on the interstate. I said, I ain't going to use it. Man, you hit that damn curve. Shh, got damn truck like this. You like, oh, hell. And then you already hit the... Then, then, then you're going too fast. You ain't got no choice but to hit the brake. Because especially if you got a curve like this, you got no choice but to hit the brake. Yeah, but you don't want to do that, man. Slow down before you go through these curves, man. Hey, driving this down automatic gonna be a whole lot easier than driving this man. Stop lights. Time of stop lights. Coming up stop lights. You way back there. You see it green. I mean, if you see some other cars, if you going straight and you see some cars coming this way and you and you a ways back, look for look for that look for that light to turn red. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm doing this for y'all, man. I'm making this video for y'all. 21 minutes right now. I hope y'all watching. I'm, I've been on the truck all day, man. I got up this morning about seven o'clock. Like I said, got there. Uh, at it. We slept in the in the, in the uh, shippers uh, parking lot last night, so we was already there. But, but I still got up early. I got up like 6:30. Uh, stayed out there on the yard at that place to about 12. Secured the load. That took about an hour. Yes, around two, or, around two or three o'clock. I had, I, I, I didn't, I, I had all eight. I mean, I ate, but I had all eleven on my drive hours, and I drove all the way here from uh, the land. So, uh, excuse me. I think, um, I think, I think I had, I had eleven hours of drive time. This trip was like nine hours. 50 minutes, so I only had like an hour and some minutes to spare. So you know, um, if I would've got caught in some bad traffic or something like that, it would've ate my hours up. But anyway, I was determined to make it here. You see my eyes a little red. I was determined to make it here. But I got the weekend off. I don't gotta show up till Monday at the terminal in Birmingham. So what I'm gonna do tomorrow, I'm gonna go get a haircut. I'm going to go get me something to eat, something good to eat because I ain't had no good food. I've been eating truck stop hot dogs. Ain't nothing wrong with truck stop hot dogs. I, I mean, they get that. They serve the purpose, get you something quick. I mean, hell, you might get tired of them, man. I don't, I'm getting tired of them already. <sighs> they got truck stop pizza. They got truck stop burritos. They got them... Um, yeah, this last train I was with, he liked Love's. So, you know, we stopping at Love's all the time. Damn near every Love's I went to had a fucking Arby's. I'm like, damn. I'm like, damn, what, what, what else y'all getting offered besides Arby's? I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's just uh, where I was at in uh, New Orleans. And uh, we're right outside New Orleans. And 
all down here in Florida and all that. Like, damn, every day in their loves and stuff, they had the Arby's. I'm like, damn, it's something different. But, um, yeah, I guess he liked to use loves because we hardly ever went to a pilot or a Petro. We went to a Petro one time. And uh, Petro has a pretty... I mean, I, I mean, everybody got showers, you know. They work the same. They run water on your ass, get you clean. But uh, Petro, you know, they decorate theirs. They got little Christmas trees in there and shit. And they got body wash that smell good. They got the soap sitting on it, um, the sink. Like you at a little hotel or something. So Petro, yeah, Petro, nice too. Nice on the inside. Real nice. Compared, to, if you if you always, if you used to seeing loves and uh, pilots, the first time you go into Petro, you're going to be like, damn, this shit nice. So, um, riding with the trainer again, I forgot to mention this. Hey, don't go in that damn truck acting scared, man. I ain't, I ain't talking about just acting scared of the truck. I mean, of course you're gonna be a little nervous about driving the truck. But you know, what I don't get about these trainers, man, they they still they still try to they try to get you to do stuff like the way they do it. They want you to speed. Like, like it was raining tonight, you know. I don't I'm I don't feel comfortable driving right at the speed limit. You can go less than 15 miles below the speed limit. I mean, I'm not saying that I was going that slow. I mean, but like, most of the time you'll see it posted, and it's more than 15. Like, you might see on the interstate, uh, speed limit 70, minimum speed 40. That's 30 right there. But the rule of thumb is 15 below, that's the rule of thumb. And you, and you need to be in the right lane if you're doing that. But, uh, hell, I won't go on this slow. I'm probably going, like, five, five miles slow. And this trying to kill me. You're going too slow. You need to pick it up. Speed limit 50, uh, 55. You're going 52. Like, what the fuck? Like, damn, it's only fucking three miles. I, 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 I feel... When you driving that truck, you in control of that truck, man. If you read that truck, you getting the goddamn CSA score fucked up. Ain't nobody else driving it. You driving it. I mean, the man there for 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 moral support, you know, and uh, to, to help you if you need help, you know, you can ask him a question, shit like that. He ain't there to the goddamn. I mean, I can understand if the motherfucker tell you, oh, you swerving, you need to get back in this lane. Oh yeah, I can understand that. But don't tell the student he driving too slow. He driving at the pace that is comfortable for him. He's like, oh, somebody gonna hit you in the butt in the ass. Okay, if somebody if somebody hits you in the fucking rear, that ain't your fault. That's that that's that other vehicle's fault. Then when the state trooper come and, and they say, oh, well, he was going 52, and that's why I hit him. Man, that state trooper don't give a damn about that. That person in the back getting that damn ticket. Do what's safe for you. I mean, especially all you new truckers out there riding on these roads that you don't know, you know, flying up and down hills. Man, do what's best for you, man. Don't let nobody tell you you're doing something wrong. Do what's best for you. Don't go in that truck acting like no damn hoe. Don't be scared of the truck. Don't be scared of the trainer. Cause like I said, y'all work for the same company. Y'all y'all get the same damn paycheck from the same man. Y'all, y'all the hey, only thing is, he a trainer. Don't let these trainers fool you. They preach all that shit about, yeah, I'm doing this, uh, doing this to help help the company out. Uh, I'm doing this. Man, them motherfuckers doing that shit for the money. That's the only reason they doing it. So you might got a few that really enjoy doing it, but hell, they it cut the payout. See if they still enjoy doing it. Tell, tell the motherfucker, oh, yeah, since you love doing it so much, here, train this guy for three weeks on your truck. Let's see how they react in. Man, don't let these motherfuckers fool you, man. Don't let them fool you. Like I said, get in the truck, just be respectful. You see, if you see the trainer in the bed, you know, it's kind of late, but you need the light. You know, see if he up. Hey, excuse me, sir. Mind if I cut the light on for a minute? Go ahead and cut the light on. Do everything you need to do so you can get out that man's way. I mean, if you in his space, you on his truck. You got you to gotta remember that. You on that man's truck. I mean, hell. I mean, it, it ain't it ain't too... I mean, it might give you a little rules, you know. 
like um when we get fuel, clean the windows off, or if the trash bag fill up, you know, I got some more trash bags right here. Just take the trash out. Like stuff like that, man. Don't be no damn hoe. Don't let the goddamn trainer talk to you any kind of way. Cause you know what's gonna happen? He gonna talk to you any kind of way about one, two times, and you keep letting it slip, and he gonna keep right on doing it. One, two, one, one two more time, he gonna keep right on doing it. And then finally, before you know it, you you the goddamn trainer bitch. Before you know it, he gonna be talking to you like that in front of other drivers. Y'all gonna be sitting at the goddamn yard or, or the stop. Y'all gonna, you know, motherfuckers be waiting in line to get that truck loaded so they all standing around doing goddamn cooler talk. That motherfucker gonna be treating you like a goddamn bitch in front of everybody. And then you, you don't know what he already told them other drivers while you sitting in the truck. You don't know what he said. Yeah, this motherfucker, man, this motherfucker, this, man. I, Man, don't trust these people, man. I'm not even saying don't trust a trainer. You know, just that's just life in general. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta pick and choose, man. You you can look, you can you can deal with somebody. I ain't gonna say it could be thirty seconds. <sighs> Cause you might meet somebody, might be talking crazy, you know, acting stupid, you know, like in your head, like yeah, I can't fuck with this person. Yeah, man, it's the same way with trucking. You can figure somebody out quick. If a motherfucker always making smart comments, I mean, let let them make the smart comments. Let them make let them make a couple. Let them make a couple couple smart comments, just so you can make sure you're not overreacting. Just you're not overthinking. Like, oh, I was overthinking. You know, he wasn't doing nothing. But guess what? When the motherfucker keep making goddamn negative shit to say. That's when you gotta goddamn check that shit. Re- respectfully, professionally. Just say, look, I don't appreciate you talking to me like that. I'm just trying to do my job. You don't gotta be ugly about it. Professional as hell. That's all you gotta do. No no cuss words, no he hard, no threats. Keep it professional, man. Keep keep that shit all the way professional. Trying to remember what else I was gonna tell y'all on this video. Hell, I forgot. I didn't even realize this video was gonna even be 30 minutes long. Yeah, I didn't even realize it was gonna be 30 minutes long, man. I, I don't even know, man. Half of y'all probably won't take the time to watch it. I mean, but if you do watch it, man, it's some pretty good points up here. Uh, if if anybody happened to see this video. That's going to uh, Birmingham's orientation this week. I think y'all start on Sunday. I don't know. Yeah, y'all start up. Because the guy at the hotel was like, yeah, they start getting here on Saturday. So, yeah, I'm already in the hotel. So, you know, y'all might, I don't know, y'all y'all ain't going to be here. I'll be downstairs for breakfast. Y'all ain't going to be here by then. Uh, some of you might be, but I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm at the same hotel that the uh, orientation people were at. Matter of fact, Monday, I'm gonna ride the van with y'all. Um, I hope I hope the man. I don't know how many people they got in this class, but uh, I got I got like fucking five bags with me. Yeah, so he might have to make two trips come out and get me. So it's almost two o'clock now, man. I, I think I had some more stuff I want to talk to y'all about. Well, I can't remember it. Main thing is. Don't go on that goddamn trainer truck being scared. Don't be scared of the truck. Don't be scared of the trainer. My, last, my, my first trainer, I had to get off the truck. I mean, for some uh, personality conflicts, you know. But uh, I, 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 I let that shit slide for a while, you know. I was like, all right, I'm, I'll just ignore it. Cause you know, I'm, I'm here just to fucking get my shit together so I can get my own truck. I mean, but it finally got to the point, you know, where it's like, nah, I can't do this. I can't do this, man. So yeah, but hey, uh, Melton did a pretty good job, but getting me off the truck the same day. And uh, the next day, right back out the next day, I was with another trainer. So uh, you can't beat that. I learned more with this trainer than I did with that other trainer. A whole lot more. I'm not, I'm not gonna say nothing nothing about that trainer or what he did and didn't do and all this and that, but 
I learned way more valuable information with this million mile guy. Hey, he got over a million miles, so obviously he doing something right. He showed me a lot of little tricks. What to do, what to don't do. You know, it is what it is. Whew. That's the last fucking yard right there. Take my ass to fucking bed. I don't even know if I'm gonna get up and get some breakfast. But I'm about to sleep good tonight, I know that. Well, when I when I make my video for uh, when I go pick my truck up, I'm gonna try to make that shit cinematic. I'm gonna try. So just stay tuned for that. Cinematic. Dion gets his truck. I'm gonna try for cinematic. I can't promise, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to do something real nice for that one. But, uh, Hey, anybody want to know anything about Melton? If if I know what I do, what I know, if I know the answer, I tell you. If I don't know, better Google that shit. Uh, go go holler at the other Melton Melton drivers. All right, it ain't too many of them on YouTube. I, I I ain't even met none of them YouTube like like the husband and wife team. I ain't even. I don't know where they at. I ain't met them. They must be up in Kansas or Montana somewhere. And they don't plan on coming out. But yeah, I might run into them one day. Trucks, uh, truck with us. Shout y'all out. My other Melton family. We all blue. So yeah. Anybody got anything they want to ask me? Woo! Rick Flair whoop go whoop on a bitch. Rick Flair drip go whoo on a bitch. Anybody got anything they want to ask me? Say it now forever. Hold your motherfucking peace. Capice. Take my ass to bed, people. If I remember a topic that I didn't bring up, I'll get it on the next video. See this beautiful bed behind me? King size bed for me, myself, and I. King size bed. Been sleeping in that top bunk on that goddamn truck for the last two and a half weeks. So I'm going to enjoy that tonight. I'm going to enjoy getting up in the morning, brushing my teeth, and not having to fucking brush my teeth out of a water bottle. I'm going to enjoy that. I took me a long shower before I, uh, I made this video. That's another thing about these trainers, man. I don't know. I don't know. What's up with, I don't know if it's all trainers or it's some trainers. Why? Why the shower? Why? Why? Why the? And, and I ain't. See, I ain't even gonna say trainers. Old school drivers. Why y'all want to get mad at new school driver when new school driver want to take a shower every night? It ain't like you got to go out of your way to take the damn shower. Especially if you parked at a truck stop. If you parked at a truck stop and you ain't had no shower in three days, two days, two days, you might can get by on one day. If you want to run hard and get all your miles and you get your miles, you be tired. But ain't no excuse. If, if the damn shower free because your damn rewards cars, you're getting fueled every damn time we stop. If the motherfucker shower was free, take the motherfucker shower, man. Y'all motherfuckers pull up in the truck stop, cut the truck off, hop right in the goddamn bunk. But you been securing those all day. Come on, man. Take a goddamn shower. Ain't that much effort. I'm taking a shower tonight. I already took one tonight. Hell, I'm taking one in the morning. I'm taking one every, every afternoon. Going to bed, people. The boy eyes is heavy. But I hope I give y'all a little bit of information that y'all can run with and make the most of it. Trucker D. Nice visions. Drive for Melton. <laughs>